Welcome back everybody to our studies in existentialism. This lesson is going to be introducing the next of our philosophical thinkers on this topic, this being an introduction to the works and the writings and the influence of, of, of Martin Heidegger, um, one of the more influential, if not simultaneously controversial uh, philosophers within the broader subject of, of existentialism, within the broader movement of existentialism. This is, of course, moving away from the writings of the previous uh, major uh, influential philosophical figure on this particular topic. This, of course, being uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. And as I mentioned in previous videos, that essentially when we think about existentialism, existentialism is less of a very, very specific uh, movement within philosophy or uh, a very very specific set of philosophical ideas it is more so uh, a, a set of uh, it, it is it, it is more so an understanding within philosophy that is something that sort of permeates uh, a number of philosophers rather than it being uh, consciously and explicitly a, a a a movement like for example stoicism or for example uh, if we look at philosophical positions like liberalism within political philosophy it is less that kind of um, that kind of idea but more uh, a collection of of, of views and a collection of understandings that sort of permeate a number of different philosophers which is why even though each of these different topics has been exploring the influence of very specific philosophers we've been talking about Kierkegaard we've been talking about Nietzsche we're talking about Heidegger we'll talk about Jean-Paul Sartre as well even though this is the case the series of lessons that we've been doing have not been specifically about those people they have been about some of the ideas that those people have presented and permeated that coincides with and perpetuates views that are sort of existentialist in nature specifically over the next few lessons then what we are going to be doing is talking about some of the philosophy of martin heidegger so who actually was martin heidegger well, he was a German philosopher born in 1889, and the, job, the majority of his works is in the study of phenomenology. Now, phenomenology is something that we will get to in future lessons time and that, that we'll study in, in, in future lessons time. Um, and, and fundamentally, um, the thing that is uh, very, very interesting about phenomenology is that what we are thinking about with regard to phenomenology is the idea of individual lived experiences. It is the research and the philosophy of experience, if, if fundamentally. Uh, but more controversially, um, and something that often gives Heidegger a bad name, and as it rightly should, is that uh, he had joined in 1933 the... Nazi party. He had joined the NSDAP, the National Socialist uh, Party, and remained a member of the Nazi party until after the end of the Second World War, at which point, of course, the Nazi party would collapse, which is obviously in 1945. So by, by all accounts and by all references uh, and, by all, uh, and by all standards, uh, Martin Heidegger was a Nazi and was somebody who believed in Nazi ideology. Um, this, of course, would raise questions about the influence of uh, things relating to inherent fascist ideology, for example, that of Nazism, and the extent to which this actually influences um, his own personal beliefs, but also his own philosophy, and the extent to which there is a connection and a, and a, and a culmination in those two ideas. Um, something that we will get to in future lessons, but one of the things that this is actually illustrative of is the fact that existentialism and 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 having uh, presenting existentialist ideas within within your philosophical movement is something that therefore brings into the fold a whole host of very very different philosophical thinkers somebody like kierkegaard on the one hand or nietzsche on the other hand versus somebody like martin heidegger who was an, an actual literal member of the nazi party obviously all of these things are very very um, broad and interesting influences and ideas um, such that that's one of the other reasons why um, you can't necessarily equate existentialism 
them and boil it down and reduce it to uh, very basic ideas. You can't suggest, for example, that existentialism um, would be associated with a certain political movement, for example. It's not like uh, existentialism is a politically far right or, or left wing or progressive or, or centrist kind of movement. Uh, it is one that is obviously not political necessarily in nature, but it is one that also encapsulates and encompasses a whole host of various different interesting characters, such as Martin Heidegger. So, obviously, one of the things that you have to bear in mind when thinking about Martin Heidegger is the extent to which fascist, fascist ideology can be read into his philosophy. And this is not something that uh, is necessarily uncontroversial, and it is not something that necessarily discredits a philosopher. One of the interesting things is that uh, one of the most influential uh, constitutional philosophers and political philosophers um, in, in regard to that particular area is Carl Schmitt. And Carl Schmitt was also a very dedicated, probably far more dedicated than Heidegger, uh, member of the Nazi party and remained a devout Nazi um, throughout his entire life. But then contributed to philosophical thought and contributed to constitutional theory from the perspective of uh, of Nazism and from the perspective of fascism. So there's obviously value that can be taken from that without necessarily uh, adhering to uh, fascist ideology, which is, of course, something that none of us want to actually be able to do. In terms of providing a little bit more of a, of a biography of Martin Heidegger, the most influential of his pieces of writings um, around and specifically related to existentialism, or at least that has existentialist flavours to it, uh, but also more broadly one of his most important pieces of uh, major philosophical contributions, is his 1927 work Being and Time. It is a fundamental text on the subject of existentialism, and the central question of this text is whether or not ontology, the subject of existence, the study of existence, can be analysed through the lens of something known as dear sin, die sin. Um, this was a German word, this is the German word for existence, and it is used by Heidegger to refer to the idea that humans have this unique experience of being. And this obviously ties into his writings on phenomenology. You remember back earlier on, phenomenology is the philosophical study of lived experience, the philosophical sub, uh, subject of uh, the study of subjective experience uh, in, in, in reality and in the ways in which subjects experience reality itself. It is with this analysis that Heidegger goes on to exploring the nature and the meaning of being, the question of what it means to be intelligible as beings themselves. And this obviously, as I've just mentioned and as, as cited here on the screen, ties into his writings on phenomenology, the idea of phenomenology uh, within broader philosophical foundations. Um, philosophically, um, what phenomenology um, could, uh, could accurately be described as is partially the study of consciousness. So the, it's a little bit more than that, though, um, and which is why I've I've, I've sort of ex I've sort of expanded on that later on in this on this slide. Uh, it's more than just the study of consciousness. The philosophy of consciousness and the philosophy of mind is a series of uh, videos and as a series of lessons that we will do in the future anyway. But phenomenology is a little bit more than that. Phenomenology is more accurately described as the structures of communist uh, communists of consciousness as experienced from the first person point of view. This is the Stanford Encyclopedia definition of, of phenomenology. Um, too, much, too much conversation about political theory and, and, com, uh, and, and fascism and Nazism uh, naturally brings out uh, conversations about communism uh, by extension, as it turns out. But like I've said here, more accurately, therefore, phenomenology is the study of objectivity and reality and the ways in which this actually uh, interacts with the subjective experience, the experience of the subject. Now, originally developing um, under the writings of people like Edmund Husserl, um, uh, phenomenology uh, also factors into the writings of Heidegger, and we'll explore this in future lessons time in a little bit more detail.
should also be noted that phenomenology is a series of lessons that we can do on our own uh, as its own separate as its own separate study uh, but fundamentally phenomenology is is something that is interconnected with a variety of different areas so uh, phenomenology can be inter interconnected with and studied through the lens of ontology epistemology logic through ethics through the philosophy of mind as well as contemporary theories of consciousness so that's something that you should bear in mind when thinking about phenomenology in future lessons as always the citations and further reading have been cited here on screen you have the uh, short introduction to existentialism as well as the cambridge companion the cambridge companion is particularly useful in my opinion for uh, the works on heidegger and how heidegger is is is, is perceived through the existentialist lens